Hey, welcome to another edition of Not Part of Your Scene uh, podcast website, now a YouTube channel. Um, basically, the YouTube channel is just me in my office talking about crap, so uh, we'll see what goes from there. Uh, today, I'm not going to, you know, typically I talk about music and records and stuff, um, but today I'm going to review um, Star Wars Dr. Aphra, uh, Volume 1. So, if you're a Star Wars fan, and especially if you're a comic, uh, a fan of the comics, uh, you know I'm way behind. So, the reason I'm behind on Dr. Aphra, and I've been dying to read this for months and months, more than a year, I think, is because I've been waiting for Marvel to uh, continue to release stuff on in hardcover. And, you know, I, I basically lay down the money for the hardcover books, um, just because I think they look cool, and um, Star Wars at the beginning actually grabbed two really good two really good writers. Kieran Gillen, who writes Doctor Aphra, writes also wrote is writing Darth Vader, and then Jason Aaron wrote Star Wars. If you go on the Star Wars comic Reddit, you find a lot of people hating on Jason Aaron, which annoys me. I like his run, at least the run I read. Um, you know, at least the run I've read, because I've been waiting for the stupid hardcovers to come out. Uh, I enjoyed it, but I really, really, really enjoyed uh, Kieran Gillen's Darth Vader. And one of the reasons I enjoyed it is because he knew how to... He knew how, how to graze up against the saga and the movies and the stuff that uh, most people are familiar with Star Wars. And then also knew how to introduce uh, new ideas and new characters. One of those new characters introduced in Darth Vader was Dr. Aphra. And Dr. Aphra is also very uh, controversial as far as whether or not she's a good character. Um, but I love her, and I'm not... I, I think what um, the last Star Wars film showed is that there's just some snooty Star Wars fans that they can't take Star Wars getting a little bit different. Um, and And... I don't think I realized that till the film came out. But that's what we've been seeing with Dr. Aphra. Now, that doesn't mean this book is incredible. She was an incredible character uh, in Darth Vader, and Kieran Gillen uh, wrote, an, you know, created an incredible character in Darth Vader, uh, especially considering how powerful Darth Vader is, how really tough it is to write a character like that. You really got to have a feel for the... the uh, the supporting cast you put around him. And so Dr. Aphra was supporting cast, and then um, uh, BT and Triple Zero, who are, you know, almost parodies of R2-D2 and C-3PO. I mean, they are parodies, except they exist in the canon, so they're not parodies. Uh, you know, we're all great, and we're all beautiful. So I was excited when I heard that Dr. Aphra was getting her own series, like, way more than a year ago. And I thought, oh, geez, I can, you know, it's hard enough to hold on and wait for, wait for trade paperbacks to come out, right? And, and Marvel doesn't, you know, Marvel, especially with the Star Wars books, they really gut you as far as price. You know, everything's $3.99, $4. You know, if it has, if it has an extra story in the back, it's five bucks. You know, and it's it's hard to, for me to get into issue by issue, although I've started buying issues, and I'll start reviewing those too. But um, it's hard enough to even wait for the trade paperbacks. And then when the trade paperbacks come out, that's not that's not uh, image pricing. You know, this is, you're going to pay $17.99, and for the most part, this is a character no one gives a shit about. You know, you have to be into Star Wars and have an open mind as far as new characters go, because some people just stick to the main characters. If it's not Luke, if it's not Leia, if it's not Chewbacca and Han, they go fuck it. Me, on the other hand, as big a Star Wars fan as I am, I realize how shitty the movies are. Even the new ones. I still enjoy them and love them, and I watch them and I have a good time, but I just know how many, how much better the stories can get in that world when you watch Clone Wars and Rebels, you read some of the comics, some of the great writers like Kieran Gillen, um, you know, anything with Thrawn in it in the old, in the Legend series. So I recognize how the potential of the world and the world building, and I don't let it just 
revolve around Luke Skywalker. So I come into this with an open mind, um, and I ended up just eating it and deciding to buy the trade the trade paperback. I thought, hey, I can just resell it if a hardcover comes out. Um, I don't know how I'm going to resell this piece of shit because it's in not great condition. So, you know, I might. This is something I might give away to a, like a kid or a friend of mine or something that might like Star Wars. I mean, it's got a mark here. You know, I guess that's what I get for buying it out of Amazon. And I think I bought it from a second seller. So it's not even in very good condition. But luckily, the story is intact. And um, Kieran Gillen is extremely creative. You know, the way he writes and, and the difficulty of getting, you know... Darth Vader's in almost to episode or issue 50, and it's all taking place between episode 4 and 5. Dr. Afra is in the 20s. Um, you know, he took over Star Wars, and now they're in just past 50. Uh, the 50, I saw the 50th, I bought the 50th issue, so I think they're at 50. Um, so, man, I mean, you got to give him credit for thinking up stories and Jason Aaron at the beginning of Star Wars, run, the run, for thinking of stories that happen between something that's so big. And you're so... I'm drinking uh, Cloud Surfer and IPA from uh, Trophy Brewing in North Carolina. I am not in North Carolina. I'm in Las Vegas. But... And I can't remember how I got this. Maybe it was Tavor or maybe someone gave it to me. Um, so to think of stories just to happen within that period and then to be so limited you know you can't really kill the main characters and in the main star wars book you know they're always safe darth vader you gotta you gotta just build this whole weird situation you gotta like really exploit the emperor stuff that you know darth vader is although he's uh one of the most powerful beings in the universe he's limited in certain ways so you, you know you gotta be really creative and Except in the fact that, um, you know, you can't do huge universe changing stuff because it would have been noticed in the films, right? You get a little more freedom in a book like Dr. Aphra and Kieran Gillen sort of shows it. And they actually do some universe destroying stuff here. Not destroying, but universe big stuff. So right now I'm going to tell you that, um, I'm going to start spoiling this comic. Um, I, it gets, so... It gets a thumbs up for me. I'm going to continue to read it. I think it's really cool. But I'm going to start talking about specific stuff and opening the book and talking about what happens in Volume 1. So if you don't want spoilers, um, turn it off now. If you just cared about what my rating was, it's an 8 out of 10. It's a thumbs up. It's a I will continue buying. Um, and I'll definitely buy a hardcover if it comes out. So that's where we stand there. So spoilers starting now. Okay? Um, so, you know, the, there's a trope, and, um, I guess I really noticed this in the Netflix series for Marvel, but, you know, whenever you want to go deep into a character, all you got to do is introduce their parents, and you get introduced to Dr. Afra's father right there, um, hopefully you can see that, uh, and so you, you start finding the daddy issues, and Netflix is all about that. It's about dad and mom issues. I just realized that. Even Daredevil, when the new season comes out, you know, spoiler alert, that's mom shit happening there where he woke up at the end of Defenders. Oh, spoiler alert there, too. Um, anyway, so you go into the daddy issues. It's a bit of a trope, but it works because the father's uh, somewhat interesting. The problem is, is that they turn his world around in here, so... You know, if he is in the books um, coming up, or in, in future issues, I'm, I'm curious to see what they do with him, or what kind of adventure Dr. Affer goes in. I'm, I'm pretty sure Karen Gillan is not going to uh, deal with the father for a while, and then, you know, just because I see comic covers, I know Screaming Citadel's coming up and stuff, so um, we'll see if he's reintroduced and, and what he has to do with it. But, uh, so what you get here, though, is... Um, more of Dr. Afra's past, uh, why she's that sort of immoral Indiana Jones type, um, and then, you know, the very difficult thing of, of making an antagonist a protagonist, because she's not a good guy, she's an amoral person who, you know, occasionally might not kill in cold 
who won't kill in cold blood, basically. But she's on the team of someone who will. Um, I can't even pronounce the Wookiee's name. I just realized Black Kirshdan or something like that. I just realized I read that name and don't know how to pronounce it. Normally I would come uh, in front and make sure I knew all the pronunciation. But he's a murderer. She walks around with two uh, those two droids I just said, Triple Zero and, and BT. And, and they're murder droids. They're made to murder. So it's um, sort of strange that, uh, you know, it's... It's strange that you have to write an antagonist as a protagonist. It's sort of that anti-hero thing that's been popular the last 20 years. But uh, Kieran Gillen's done it with Darth Vader. You still find some way to root for her, and the story's still interesting. Now, um, the other thing that I would uh, point out here is, in as far as the writing goes and, and what can happen in this galaxy and why it's sort of cool, is they're looking for their archaeologist, so is the dad, essentially, and... Um, they're looking for some ancient uh, city that the dad wants to uh, use to make the universe safe again. Um, but this person, this person they wake up can control uh, robots and is pretty powerful and they're able to shut them down immediately. And I just wanted to point out that if you're creative about it, you really can do the big, giant, near world changing stuff in between... Uh, episode four and five, you know, so long as you're clever about the way you write it. And Kieran Gillen is very clever about the way he writes it. You know, even though he might fill in with some uh, pretty normal stuff like, oh, daddy issues and, and, you know, flashbacks and stuff, I guess you expect it. Um, but uh, despite that, you know, everything around it's very very creative, well thought out, well built, and, and really fits into the Star Wars universe. And one of the most fun things is to think that, you know, while I'm watching Empire Strikes Back, that there's a Dr. Aphra floating around out there. And I know she's not in the films, but I know she's out there floating around, uh, or, you know, unless they kill her off before Empire Strikes Strike Back starts, um, you know, that she's floating around and, and doing her thing in the Star Wars universe, even though you don't see her, you know, and this a similar hap thing happens in you know when you watch a movie like Rogue One, you know the rebels are out there. In fact, you hurt, you hear the little Easter eggs in there. So um, very exciting. The writing is top notch. I do want to point out some um, some art in here. Uh, so Kev Walker uh, is who did uh, the pencils, and I think he inked it too. Um, I think one of the things you'll notice is when you have a, we'll compare in the Darth Vader books, really. So when you have La Roca, and I'm sorry, I can't remember if his name is Salvador or Silvio or, or what, Salvador La Roca, you see that um, you get this more realistic uh sort of sort of drawing and part of that hopefully you can see that's not just blurry but I'm we'll get that fixed if it is and part of that is because Salvador La Roca knows who he's drawing he knows he's drawing Mark Hamill and he knows he's uh he's drawing like real actors right but here the drawing gets more cartoony and I know that it's part um I know that's part of just Kev Walker's style, but you do have a real, in some parts, like a real anime feel to it, you know? And that does throw me off. Um, I remember the Princess Leia book, who I can't remember, uh, who I can't remember who drew, who drew that right now. Uh, I remember reading, after reading, you know, the first six issues of Star Wars and the first six issues of Darth Vader and whatever else I read, I remember thinking that, that that Princess Leia book really threw me off, even though I thought the book was interesting and fun, which I'll probably review here eventually. Um, and here, it, it throws me off a little bit, too. I'm used to the more painted style, I guess, or even some of these, um, some of these, like in the Star Wars book, it's uh, actual, it's just straight digital almost, you know? I mean, that looks like Han Solo and uh, digital coloring and stuff. So sometimes I don't know what I like more. You automatically, 
you automatically compare it because it's the Star Wars world and you just went from realistic or dark colors to something cartoony. But I guess that happens too when you go from the comics or the movies to a cartoon. Now you gotta feel that Rebels looks a certain way and you have to accept it that it's in the same world, you know. But within the comics, it, it makes me notice it. And, and I noticed it uh, in the beginning issues. But the story was so strong and for the most part... The drawing moved the story. The drawings moved the story along that I didn't anymore, which is probably what I want. Because I I'm gonna notice these things, you know, with a reviewer's mind and a fan's mind. I'm gonna notice them. But if I get enveloped into the story and and from a comic book perspective, that story, uh, those drawings, you know, drive the story. Then to me, it's good art, which is what it should do. I mean, not everything needs to be a splash page, and I'm no artist, but when I read stuff about, um, you know, how to draw and stuff, you seem to always see, like, hey, you don't only need splash pages when you're, when you're like, turning stuff in or when you're sending submissions in. You need to show that you can tell a story panel by panel. And, I, and that happened. Uh, there were a couple cases, and this is not Kev Walker's fault. This happens in every Star Wars book where... What's happening with ships flying around gets unclear. You have to really stop and look at it. And I can tell you that I've had that problem with pretty much every book. At least once or twice, you know, in, a, in, a, in an arc, let's say. Um, so there is that. But really, he's, he's done as, as good as anyone. I understand if, if you don't like the cartoony art. You know, and it's not always cartoony. But, it, you know, it's definitely um, maybe typical comic art, I guess you would say. Um, I was going to say it's not digitally colored, but it does look digitally colored now that I flip through it. I can't always tell I don't have a great eye. But I did get enveloped in it, and it was something I noticed at first, because I'm used to like some of the LaRocca stuff, especially he's drawing so much of it. I can't remember who's drawing the other Darth Vader series that Charles Soule is writing. Um, but that is a different feel too, and, and when I saw this, it sort of threw me off. But I think that was more me, because I got enveloped in the story. So overall, Dr. Aphra should be read. If you're a Star Wars guy that is annoyed by made-up characters that aren't in the movies, that aren't the main group, then you need to get over it because you're missing good stories. Um, you need to, you know, stop sticking up your nose. This is a really cool character, a really cool uh, sort of, you know, amoral, not new hope within you character. And I'm excited to see where she goes and, and how Kieran Gillen deals with that amoralness but keeps us rooting for her because she's the protagonist in her own book. So that's it from here. Give it, I can't remember what I said earlier, it's an 8 or 9 out of 10. It's a thumbs up and we will keep on reading it. Thank you for watching. You can find me at Chris Sarda. We have a, not part of your scene, Twitter, but it's that M-P-O-Y-S underscore music thing that I'll change whenever I feel like it. Uh, you can go to notpartofyourscene.com. And we also have a podcast. If you just search for Not Part of Your Scene on iTunes or whatever Android app you use, um, you, will, you will find us. And we mostly talk about the same thing. And then we also have a sports podcast, at Chaotic Sports. So if you care about sports, go check that out. We're going to, now that my baby's born and good to go and happy, we're going to start the regular schedule up on that and then probably do um, some Chaos Daily where we just do a quick 10 or 15, or I do a quick 10 or 15 minute morning sports talk. So thank you for watching. This was the Dr. Afro review. We gave it a, let's call it an eight and a half out of 10 and a thumbs up and a keep buying.